sitting down there and you are pressing computer. You are pressing computer. Is that one work? Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. How are you doing today? And today I'm going to be sharing some tips on how you can navigate the remote workspace in Nigeria. And if you're new here, welcome and thank you for joining this amazing family. So on this channel, I discuss everything lifestyle, workplace navigation, health and fitness and motivational tips. So let's dive right into the topic of the day. The pandemic really shifted the traditional Nigerian business environment in the sense that a lot of businesses realize that in order for them to continue to do business, they may have to take another look at the way their employees deliver their services. So one of the things that they did differently was to adopt the remote work model where you are allowed to work from the comfort of your home. But there's a constraint for some organizations where they were unable to navigate into that remote workspace because of the type of services that they provide. So they had to shut down for a while. But for companies who were able to navigate to remote work, they started working, you know, remotely. And I would say as somebody who had to start working remotely in 2020, it was not an easy space to navigate. It was nothing like what I expected. So one of the rude awakenings that I had was that there are so many things that you have to provide for yourself and you have to think it through. And because I didn't have prior ex um, I didn't have prior experience on how to manage it, I actually fell victim to some issues. And so that's why I'm coming right here to discuss some of the things that you need to think about when you start working remotely so if you've just started working remotely or you've been working remotely i'd like to share these tips with you so let's dive right in so the first rude awakening i got when i started working from home had to do with power so i was working on this project it was time bound my battery was running low and for some reason i had forgotten to plug it into power and whoa that's how you know never took light and my battery started saying battery low ah you know, at that point, I was really, really frustrated because that report needed to go. And I was working on a live document, which means that I couldn't save on my desktop. For security reasons, I couldn't save it on my desktop. So it was live and if laptop or the, my system goes off, that's the end of that document and all the changes I made on it. So I was very, very frustrated. And at that point in time, my generator in the house was really bad. So I didn't have any alternative. At the end of the day, I could not submit that report even though it was time bound i couldn't submit it as at the time i was supposed to submit it so it was really painful for me because i'm like i've had i've worked so hard on this and at the end of the day you know it was nothing to show for it it was a very frustrating day for me and that was the good that we think i had to have so my advice here is that if you're working from home one of the things you really need to have is options to power you need to have other options to the power you are supplied for by the discos because at any point in time they may take light and you will need that power to power up your devices as often as possible because your devices will be running at least eight hours long so if you're working from eight to five your device will definitely be running all the time and one of the things you need to do is to be able to have backup power to charge your devices when you need to so it's very very important for you to have backup power i have three options for you for the backup power one of them is a generator you hear that you need a generator it's very very important I don't know how a household who does not own a generator in Nigeria right now. So you need a generator to be able to, you know, back up the power you have. So if, for instance, this goes stick their light, you just plug in, just put on your generator, and then you continue to work seamlessly. Believe me, that will save you a lot of headache, a lot of stress, mental and physical stress. It will save you and it will help in your productivity. Another alternative you can have to power is um, solar or inverter. So these two are almost, um, you know, the same thing, but they are different in the way that they work. So the major thing is that they will both give you power to, to you know, 
charge up your devices so it it depends on how uh, boxed up you are because those other two options are a bit on the eye side for they are a bit on the eye side so you may want to just go for generator or if you can afford it you can go for solar or inverter so what you definitely want to be having is options to you know the power supply and that would be in either you have a generator um, a solar energy or you have inverter to power up your devices so let's go to the next tip the next tip i have for you is having options or alternatives to network service providers do you know how bad our network service providers get i mean you know how terrible and you know very annoying they can get in fact that you're trying to make a call you're getting the busy thing now when the phone is clearly not busy or you're trying to do something on the internet but you are unable to connect because there's low signal or no signal at all so it is very very important for you to be able to have options when it comes to this network services you need to have options when it comes to network services i can't stress that enough because a lot of your work will now be online and what that means is that you need to be online 24 7 or throughout the entire period that you'll be working for in a day you need to be online so if you're working with a network that is not strong enough in signal or it's not reliable you will be frustrated because i've had an instance where i've had instances where i have cried shed tears i've been frustrated because network will not allow me to join meetings i get credit for those meetings and sometimes i want to download a file or something from you know my mail i'm unable to do that sometimes i can't it's as bad as sometimes i can't even access my email you know to check what's happening so it can be very very frustrating so what you would want to do in this case to avoid getting yourself into this drama what you want to do is do like a survey of your environment and find out which or what networks have the, have the strongest signals in those areas now when you find the two best signals then you now look at the better one so the better one will serve as your main um the better one will serve as your main network while the other one will serve as a backup so one thing you definitely want to be looking at is other options when it comes to network service providers because all of them can actually go off at the same time and you will not be able to connect to the internet which means that your productivity will be low and you'll be frustrated and you will not be centered enough to deliver your duty so yes that's one thing you need to look at very 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 important hi okay so create a schedule and stick with it this is absolutely important you need to create a schedule and you have to be able to stick to that schedule that you've created to allow you to be very very productive and focused at work so i'll share an experience with you when i started working remotely i was so ecstatic i'm like okay so this is really nice i don't really have to wake up at four o'clock anymore i was very excited so i'll just sleep till very too late maybe like 8 30 and sometimes when i wake up i realize that i have a lot of meals on my um i have a lot of meals that require my attention i have some things i need to do so i'll just wake up from my bed because my laptop is always beside my bed i get up from my bed i pick up my laptop i open it i see all the stones of meals that i have to respond to or work on and believe me i can be there for four to five hours without even getting up to brush my teeth or have my bath i'll be there working i wouldn't even think of breakfast at that point and i realized that after so when I even finally now start, stand up to maybe eat something or freshen up or do whatever, in one hour or 30 minutes time, I'm back at it and I'm there sometimes like 10, 11, you know, and you keep having people sending you emails at all hours. So what did I do differently? I realized that this was not working out and I was going to burn out very, very soon the way I was going. I decided to use the schedule I had when I was working on site. That is when I was going to the office physically, I decided to use that schedule to create a remote work schedule for myself. So here is how the schedule goes. The schedule is in like, I think five parts. So when I was working physically, I used to go to the office. I used to get, my commute time was between five o'clock and 6.30. And my work starts about eight o'clock. And I work from eight to five. So my closing time is five o'clock. Now between eight and five, you are required to take one hour as your break time 
and that's like the end for the day so i tried to create my schedule to mirror that so what i do presently or what's on my schedule presently is that between five o'clock to six thirty i use it to work out because of course you know that my physical activities has reduced drastically so i needed to make conscious efforts to ensure that i'm physically exercising or i'm being physically active so from 6 to 7 30 that's the time i used to work out so that happens from so clock to 7 30. now my next alarm will go off by eight o'clock and that alarm is tagged work starts so work starts for me at eight o'clock because in my office work starts from if by eight o'clock so i would ensure that i don't call anybody before that eight o'clock if i have any deliverable or if i have to you know collaborate with anyone i ensure that i don't call you before eight o'clock and i definitely will not like to be taking any call from anybody before eight o'clock because boundaries can be easily blurred when you're working from home people feel that you're just available at every time no but you have to be very conscious in the way with which you create your schedule so ensure that you're being fair to yourself and you're being fair to your organization at the same time so my schedule my work starts at eight o'clock the way the organization wants it to i don't start earlier and sometimes of course it's not all the time you'll be able to pull it off you know successfully your boss may just call you randomly into a meeting you can't say no now so you have to manage it and ensure that as much as you can you stick to that schedule and the next item on my schedule would be my break time now this is very very important because when you're working from home it is easy to get engrossed in whatever you're doing nobody's disturbing you nobody's distracting you and you're so focused on what you're doing that you lose track of time another thing i have on that schedule is my break time so at exactly one o'clock my alarm goes off to tell me it is break time this is important not just because you need to physically feed yourself you need to eat refuel and relax your brain mentally so it's important for you to have that break time it's very very important and another reason why it's important is that when you are when you're working on tax or something for long and you've been on at it at that thing for a long time believe me you will start your productivity level will start to you know reduce and you may be struggling a lot with focus at that point in time so it's always good to take a break and take a step back so that i can see that task or something or, or whatever you're working on with a new set of you know um uh, with a new set of highs because now you're taking your eye off it and coming back to it there are some informations that will jump right at you from there so creating a time for your break for to have a break is very 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 important i cannot stress that enough after that my um alarm comes back on to remind me that at 1 45 i am supposed to resume from my break time and from 1 45 or sometimes two o'clock I would work from two to five because five is my closing time i try as much as possible not to allow any job or any task or anything i'm working on to extend past that five o'clock benchmark because the organization has said we should close for five o'clock even though i'm working remotely that does not give you the right to try to talk to me after five so i try as much as possible to ensure that i stick to that five o'clock i have closed i don't want to be doing anything work or anything at that point in time this schedule has actually helped me a lot it's helped me to organize my time it's helped me to know the time that i need to have for my family so anything past five i don't want to attend to work anything work related will have to wait till the next day so it is very very important if you're just like if you're working remotely you need to create a schedule and you need to stick with it thank you so let's go to the next tip so another important tip or another thing you need to have that is very important when you're working with me is a workspace that's very very important because i was a victim of not having a work workspace before now so i just started working remotely and i didn't think i needed to have a workspace so i'll just carry my laptop go to the sitting room sit down and be working you know sometimes my little nephews come around they are making noise they want to watch coco melon and you know there seemed to be a lot of distraction everywhere and you know because i was seated before a television it was easy for my father to come and say eh, come and go and cook something for me and come and buy rice for me you know, sometimes when you try to make them understand that, see, that they are much really working, they're like, eh, sitting down there and you are pressing computer, you are pressing computer, is that one work? You you understand? And, you know, it's quite a bit uh, difficult for him to understand because 
I'm sitting right in front of the television with my laptop in front of me. I'm expecting people to think that I'm actually seriously working. So I realized that for me to have that time, for me to cut off the distractions, the interruptions, I needed to have an office space. And apart from that, I used to have it because I used to bend like this to work on my computer. It was hurting my back. So I needed to get an office space somewhere that is very secluded, still a part of the house, but somewhere that nobody will come and distract me. When, when I'm in that corner, you know that I am working. You will not even come there to distract me for whatever reason. That is not my father do. But <laughs> to the barest minimum, it reduced his interruptions. And you know, so this they, this is very, very important. You need to have a workspace. Just look for a space in your house and create a workspace. And some of the very important tools you need to have or items you need to have in your workspace would be an ergonomic chair which really supports your back and your spine and how you, you know type when you're working so this type of chair is really very important i was almost kidding myself because i didn't get this until very recently so you need a chair and a desk basically those are the basic things you need to set up your workspace then of course your diary to take down notes and your virals you know to put it down maybe a bottle of water so that every time you can take a seat without having to stand up but I like to always advise people that keep your water far away from you why is because whenever you're tasty it's good for you to stand up and you know exercise those limbs that you folded for so long on the chair so you want to drink water now it makes sense for you to stand up from that desk to just go to the kitchen grab your water come back to your desk drink it and then you move on so it also helps you put a form of physical activity into you know your daily life so Creating a workspace can actually be very expensive um, you because it's, be, it's um, getting stuff like desk, like a desk and a chair can be a bit pricey. But you can start with whatever is available and then as you go on, you had any item that you think is important for your work office. But it is very, very important for you to create a work zone and make everybody around you understand that this is my work zone and around this hour to this hour i am very engaged and busy please do not come here to interrupt and distract me and believe me they won't interrupt and they will not distract you as long as you have an office space you let them understand that there are boundaries i'm sure that they will not interrupt of course when you have kids <laughs> it's not always cast this stone. but yeah i guess to a first minimum you can still manage it when you have an office space as opposed to not having any office space so the last but not the least tip socialize with your colleagues it is very very important i can't stress how important it is because remote work is extremely boring i will not lie to you it can be very very boring because it's just you and yourself and your computer and the other people you're interacting with so remote work can be very very boring and as such you need to be able to keep in touch with people outside of work. Let it not be that every time you are communicating with your colleagues it's about work, have you sent the mail, I have received it, have you checked the schedule, I have done this. I've... No, let it not be that's the only reason. It's very important for you to connect with people so that you don't feel lonely when you're working from home. Connect with people, have conversations, call them, text them, chat, gist. It doesn't have to be work about work, 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 work all the time. Another thing why it's important to socialize with your colleagues as you work remotely is that, you know, when we were working at the office physically, information jump at you. It's very easy for you to catch a whip of what's happening around the organization when you're physically in the premises. Sometimes you're just sitting at your desk and somebody on the other desk is talking about something and you find out from there. But now that you're working remotely, those kind of informations are not even available. So for you to keep up with what is happening within your organization, in terms of maybe culture change, maybe a shift in the way you guys are working, or maybe in a shift in your mission or your vision, which is very possible, you need to be able to keep yourself abreast. And how will you do these things? Is by conversing with people, is by socializing with your colleagues. And sometimes when you're talking about stuff, that's when they'll come up and say, ah, have you heard that this? And then you learn that, oh, there's a change happening in my organization. And you are equipped with information. If you have, if the change is affecting you in any way, you have the right, you know, information or knowledge on how to tackle it 
or you know make decisions about that change that is if you necessarily have to so it's very important for you to socialize and know how to you know gather information it's actually very 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 important socialize with your colleague because it's very very lonely working from home and you also need to keep yourself abreast of what is happening in the organization that you work for and the only way you can do this is by interacting with others i have come to the end of the tips on how to successfully navigate the remote workplace in nigeria please don't forget to subscribe like this content and share with your friends. Thank you. Bye.